I like flowers. I like them in the fields and woods and bowers, in garden plots and earthen pots. In fact, I like them quite a lot. In dainty kettles or in broken cups, in vases and vases and old beer cases, they even look great in just a plate. In just a plate, they captivate. I like tulips, geraniums, asphodels, the wistful wistidia, and bashful bluebells. Blue iris, blue dunyans, blue hikins, begonias, carnations in all their tints. The primuli, the primula. Funiculi, funicula, funiculi. I like nasturtiums and the glad, the finest flower to be had, to be had. Oh. I wonder where that came from. Gladiolus, gladioli, funicula, funiculi. Oh no! I like pale heathers, pansies, flux, anemones, and cactus blooms, pink stalks, or is it stock? Well, no matter, they all please me by any name. There are honeysuckle creeper rolls by jessamine. From all of this, you really can see that I like flowers, all flowers. And flowers, they love me. If a body meets a body, a coming through the right. If a body kissed a body, need a body cry. Every lassie loves a laddie. Nay, they say, have I, but all the boys, they smile at me. <laughs> oh, when I come in, I throw the rahai.
hours, a bit worn and <laughs> a trifle dusty, but I think it'll do. When you entertain guests of upper degree, Juliet called Daisy by friends. Welcome to Wells, but help Mrs. Bateman. And this is our neighbor, Lady Warwick. Delighted, I'm sure. I've heard so much about you. Oh, you're strong and lovely, oh, My congratulations, Daisy. The party exceeds my highest expectation. As a hostess, you have few equals. Sweet of you to say so, darling. I must admit, when you first brought me here, I never thought that I would measure up. It's also very different from Savannah. But that's exactly what you're doing, measuring up and much, much more. And do you realize what this means to me? For the first time, my house can boast of a royal presence under its roof. I thank you, my dear, for all you've done with taste and grace to make tonight a truly smart affair. You put a touch of magic in the air. What did you say? That it's you my praise with my modest song as my eyes surveys the bouquets the festive blaze of lighting the bright displays of silver i'm grateful to you See 
seems the thrill of those days. To me, it seems only yesterday. Tis many years that I we are see. wed. I love outlive all time, all time. My thanks for your graciousness in making this night a huge success. And none could be more gratified, none could feel a deeper pride in you. With your talents, I'm convinced that you belong in a sonnet or a song. Come now, the decor is beautiful. Done by one so dutiful, I thank you for all you have wrought for me. Charming host is with the spring. Guests await both you and me. Thank you. For all that you gave me. Forward, Daisy. Into the fray, my dear. Work to be done now, you know. Philo, is anything wrong? I wouldn't say that exactly. Well, yes and no. It's too complicated for discussion tonight. Tonight must be quite perfect for each of us. Ladies and gentlemen, your royal highness, the Prince of Wales. A novelty. How do you do it? One often plans the same party over and over again. Yours is outstanding. Thank you. I certainly hope that the prince agrees with you. He seems to be enjoying himself. But I noticed the orchestra playing our favorite polka. What a lark! I rather fancied you'd come. Will you dance the polka with a one and a two and a three and a four? A one and a two and a three and a four will cut a caper you'll adore. Yes, I'll dance the polka with a one and a two and a three and a four. But you like it? Oh, I love it. We've never danced like this before. Point a heel and toe, what a frolic! Here we go! Like it. Although we do not like it, 
Just let me lie down and good night. And the dew gives of sleeping. Oh, oh the, the rich, rich ones, ones can sleep, sleep the morning hours away. While, while we must sweep up, up, up till the break, the break of day. Such as we, the morning after, spells nothing but disaster. Just let me lie down and forget the song and the laughter. and put the chairs back. Do you expect me to do everything? Daisy's not downstairs yet and the match begins in 30 minutes. I've simply got to have this out with her before I lose my nerve. How can I bring myself to speak the cruel words that will wound the heart of the one I once loved devotedly, one from whom I must now part. For I found another love who's like no other love before. With all my mind, my heart, my very is she I now adore. I grieve to leave this faithful wife of mine, but there's no other way. For passion's heat sweeps me up into its raging torrent. Its mighty power I can't withstand. A love like this can reach a man so deeply when he has a wife. Dear Daisy, please forgive, please understand, for this new love will be. You didn't ring for your breakfast tray. Oh, after all that champagne, I couldn't possibly eat breakfast. How about a little cup of tea? All right, Bella, a cup of tea. Okay. Make that two cups, Bella, please. Good morning, Daisy. Up early, aren't you? I was thinking about last night's party and I didn't uh, notice you coming. D did you have a good sleep? What there was of it, yes. And I must say, you outdid yourself last night. Thank you, darling. Daisy. There's something we must talk about. Do you mean that talk you didn't want to have last night? Yes, my dear. Daisy. I want a divorce. You what? 
I want a divorce. You can't be serious. I'm perfectly serious. I want a divorce as soon as possible. I promise the fairest, most generous terms if you will be reasonable. But I must have my freedom. Freedom? I never suspected our marriage was a bondage to you. What have I done that you don't love me anymore? True. We have remained childless. Now you've hit upon it. Our marriage is not a true union. It misses its basic purpose, the founding of a family. But you always said that didn't matter as long as we loved each other. There's more to it than that. Yes, there is. I assumed you knew. Nearly everyone else does. I was going to tell you, of course. Another woman. Do I know her? You met her last night. It's Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? But she is no younger than I and a childless widow. What makes you think you'll fare better with her? It's not children you want, it's Mrs. Bateman. I don't care to discuss this any further. I want a divorce as soon as possible. Is that understood? And I shall get it if you won't.
Roberts. The opera we saw last night was simply wonderful. It's such a shame that your sister and mother were unable to sit with us. Yes, well, being the great music lovers they are, they didn't even notice when the curtains went up. <laughs> huh. It was an enjoyable evening, wasn't it? By the way, I thought you were going to call me by my nickname, BP, <laughs> since I call you Daisy. You're right, BP. No, no please sit. Yes. You know, when, when Villa was still alive, we used to maintain a box there. But since his death six years ago, I scarcely ever attend anymore. You know, I had thought that since you and I share a love of sculpture and art, that an evening with opera would have been a real treat for you. It appears I may have been mistaken. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I love opera, you know. Just that first act was so long. You know, Wagner just yes, goes on and on forever. and on. Yeah. Actually, my favorite part of the evening is when you and I dis discussed your future life's work, Daisy. Oh, it's really your life's work, VP. Oh. The best I can hope to do is to bring the program of the guides to the Americas. Your Boy Scout program is truly remarkable. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. So, you really are set on leaving Great Britain and returning to America to move back into your family home? Yes, it's been far too long since I've been home. Oh, well, would you consider staying in London long enough that my sister Agnes can give you a bit of, shall we say, ground training? Uh, <laughs> I would love that. Wonderful. There's so much I need to learn. There's so much I need to ask you, like, how is it that you go about winning the cooperation of your Boy Scouts? Oh, it wasn't easy. The only way we can even get them to listen was to promise them some fun and give them some responsibility. If you want something done really very well done by someone else, let them have some fun. Don't push them about, don't prod, don't shout, just give them responsibility. Responsibility. <laughs> If you trust their worth and ability, you'll see how responsive a youth can be. Don't despair of youth. Youth is open to truth and to responsibility. <laughs> Just tell them is a sure formula to your success. To spare your blunders, regrets, and stress. Just be responsible, patient, and true. Do your thing and be nobody's fool. Don't look for the lazy and easy way. The Lord wants and miracles every day. Try to do your best. Lord. is a magic enough. Just responsibility, yes, responsibility. That's the stuff. The first goal of man is maturity. With maturity, he finds surety. Boys and girls want to prove to you just what they are able to do. So let them parade their own initiatives. Make their mistakes, win their victories. All you do is give them Responsibility, believe me, it's true. You'll just give them a full responsibility, responsibility, responsibility. <laughs> That's the stuff. <laughs> I'm so full of it today. <laughs> you really are, though. You know. When my husband and I used to go to Scotland every autumn and stay in our hunting lodge, yes. I used to see many young girls in the village that could use a program like this. You see, now this is the wonderful thing about this all, that it's for girls from every walk of life. They can form friendships and they can learn great skills all while having fun. This is going to be a great program and it's hard to believe that it all came from the work of a rich widow. BP, don't call me a rich widow. <laughs> Billa left me very little. Oh. Poet, huh? <laughs> Villa left me very little, and many women in my position would be looking for a rich husband right now. Oh. But not me. I'm perfectly content to say a single widow from now on. I promise to put all of my dedication and energy into this project, not into finding a new husband. Well, I do admire your dedication. And I understand how you feel, considering that I'm a confirmed bachelor myself. And I must admit that I often wondered what would it be like if you and I had fallen in love with each other? <laughs> We've become the best of friends, I yes, think. The best of friends. And I have a feeling that we can make a great team in spreading 
spreading scouting across the world. I agree with you. Oh, ladies, look at all the beautiful things you've made. They are wonderful, and you're all learning so fast. Girls, have you ever heard of the Girl Guides? Well, they're groups of girls like yourselves learning skills like these in order to make a better place for themselves in the world. What do you think of that? Daisy, uh, hey, look, there you are. I've been looking for you all over the castle grounds. Why, BP, what a lovely surprise. Hello. We're having our first lesson. Well, look at it. Hello, girls. Look, by the look of this, you've accomplished a lot. From what I've understood, you've what? You spent, what is it, four cookouts, is it? Three nights in the forest, and look at this. What is this right here? Are you sewing? Let me see this. How does it look? <laughs> Very nice? <laughs> Beautiful? <laughs> Can I be a girl guide? Oh, no. thank you for the hat. Look at this. <laughs> Ooh la la! <laughs> I quite forgot to introduce Sir Robert baden pole founder of the International Boy Scout Movement. Pleasure to meet you, ladies. Uh, <laughs> Daisy, uh, Miss Lowe, Daisy, I forgive her, I'm calling you right now. I must tell you something in private. Oh, ladies, why don't you run and have some tea in the garden? Yes. Enjoy your tea, girls. Maybe some Earl Grey, of course. <laughs> Great. Uh, Daisy, I have some... I have some exciting news. Well, what is it, BP? Well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really, it's quite special news, really. I'm going to be married. <laughs> you what? <laughs> That's what I said. Married. You heard correctly. <laughs> Why, you delightful traitor. Yeah. Have you forgotten that you're supposedly a confirmed bachelor? Oh, but wait until you hear about her. Actually, well... I'm really too old for her. She's only 22. She's terribly keen, terribly keen on being part of the movement, and I think she could be a great help to us. I've no doubt of that, but isn't this rather sudden? Oh, I don't quite understand it myself, but all of simply captivated me. Oh, naturally. I'm very happy for you both. Uh, I would love to meet your fiance. What did you say the young lady's name was? Olive. All of Soames. Oh. I've told her so much about you, and she's dying to meet you. Maybe, maybe a get-together with my two favorite ladies oh, once yes, you return I to London. Well, oh, hello, girls. Oh, back already, are we? Oh, how quick. Well, I must be off. Uh, ladies, it was wonderful speaking to you and knowing you. Yes? Uh, toodaloo. I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing you soon. Toodaloo, Goodbye, BP. girls. I'll Take care. Again, hello. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, Enjoy hey, the sewing. Wait a minute. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you'll be wanting these back. Here Did you go. anyone see you? Yes, by Jove, a group of blasted tourists. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Welcome to Savannah, Sherlock. Welcome to Savannah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at the birdie. Look at the birdie. Oh. <laughs> Jenkins, dear, take, take my bags upstairs, would you? Yes. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's a pretty birdie. Uh-huh. Oh, and take Sherlock, would you? He's so tired from the journey. Aren't you tired? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Here you go. Boy. Oh. <laughs> you know, I have an important phone call to make, okay? Central? Yes, give me Nina Pape's number. 482, quickly, please. Oh, hello, Nina? Yes, it's Juliet. I just got in from London. Nina, you must come right over. I have something for the girls of Savannah and America and all the world, and we're going to start it tonight. I'm just dying to tell you about it, and I need your help. Oh, you can do that tomorrow. Nina, this cannot wait. There's a wonderful new movement sweeping all of England called the Girl Guides. Through it, girls are enjoying outdoor life and learning many useful skills. 
well, such as spinning and knitting, cooking, camping, first aid, just about anything they need to know to be good citizens. Oh, I know you run a girls' school here in Savannah, and I'm sure that some of your girls would be interested in a program like this. <gasps> really? You'll send them right over? I'll be waiting for them this afternoon. Yes. Yes, thank you so much, Nian. Goodbye. Bella, put some tea on. We're going to have visitors. Today is going to be a glorious day. <sighs> You know, tying knots is just one of the fun things that you'll learn if you join the Girl Guides. Oh, Daisy, this is wonderful. My daddy said we're always going to end up in Europe, but we didn't want to war. War heavens no, my dear. The Girl Guides is a peaceful effort that is constructive, not destructive. I have a feeling that this is going to grow like a wildfire. But I want you girls in Savannah to be the first. What do you think of that? Wonderful. Well, since you've all gotten permission from your parents, what do you say we have our first meeting? Okay. Today, March 12, 1912, marks an historic day. Ooh, stand with me while we say our promise. Oh. On my honor, on my honor, I will try to do my duty to God. myself. It's Daisy Gordon, my niece and namesake who is unable to be here today. our national organization of Girl Scouts. Washington, D.C. offers us the best place to establish our national headquarters. But I can't leave Savannah just like that! What? You know what? I'm going to Washington today, and I expect to see you there tomorrow. Come without but, fail, my but, dear. But, but, but... <gasps> Please. Off 
photographer is here from a Philadelphia paper. May I call you back in a moment? Give us that big smile, Mrs. Lowe. Yeah. Now, profile. Oh. Oh. Uh, now, <clears throat> with the hat. <clears throat> Say pickle. Pickle. <clears throat> <clears throat> Here's the story to go with the pictures. Bye-bye now. Are you still there? I must tell you while in Chicago, I met with leaders in the home of Jane Addams. Everywhere I found people eager to help me with the Girl Scout movement. Yes, I'll have Miss Johnson send more information. Thank you for your interest, Andrew Call. Edith, we have been in Washington for two years now. What have we accomplished? Our membership has reached over 1,000. And you were elected national president of the Girl Scouts of America. That's right, wonderful. Now it's time to move on to New York City. Ooh. Well, I'm simply not going anywhere unless it's back to Savannah. I'm about to have a nervous breakdown here, and New York is no place for me. Well, Edith, I'm sorry to hear that, and we'll be sorry to lose you. You know, Mr. <gasps> Gammon is coming up from the South. Perhaps he will act as secretary. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. I shouldn't have said that. I don't think you appreciate any of the hard work I've done for you. No, Edith. I appreciate everything you have done for me. Everything. You see, I'm just not as young as I used to be, and I must press ahead while I still have my health and strength. For I'm on my way to old New York. I'm on my way, and I won't turn back. A woman's reach should exceed her grasp. I'm on my way now to complete my chosen task. Today, called the board, the National Board of Girl Scouts, in emergency session as president, to announce that President Wilson has accepted, with grateful thanks, our telegram offering the assistance of the Girl Scouts of America. Miss Daisy, oh yeah, I know how we could earn some money, maybe a whole lot of money, so we could buy lots of bonds, not just old stamps. Well, how, my dear? My mother makes the best cookies anyone ever tasted. I could get her to make batches and batches of cookies that we could sell in little boxes and make enough money to buy lots of bonds. We're too little to sell cookies. I couldn't sell cookies. She might be too little, but I'm not. <laughs> Just how would you go about selling your cookies, little scout? I'd knock on the door, and when I opened it, I'd say, Can it be I'm going? 
Hello, Central. Yes, give me Regent 6802 quickly, please. You see, it's been such glorious fun creating something for the girls. Working tirelessly with everyone to make this a better world. It's time to step down as president. As founder, I'll be content. Henceforth to work internationally until my strength is spent. Hello! gratitude that I hold in my heart for each of you who has worked so tirelessly to make this moment a reality. In honor of this special occasion in the history of international scouting, let us reaffirm together with Sir Robert Bain Powell, Chief Scout of the World, and his wife, Lady Baden Powell, leader of the Girl Guides, and our own Juliet Lowe, founder of the Girl Scouts of the United States, our Girl Scout promise. On my honor, on my my honor I will try to do my duty to God. Go but inside. You're not looking very well. Maybe you need to lie down. Pish tosh, Jane dear. I said that I would be here in 26 and I mean to enjoy every moment to the fullest. Inspired by Sir Robert Baden Powell's fantastic idea of scouting, our membership in 14 years has grown to 150,000 members and leaders. Thank you, Mrs. Lowe. Yours and America's is a great achievement in international cooperation. What I ask of you now is to proceed from here determined to promote peace and understanding amongst the youth of our various lands. Then, indeed, we shall see that for which we have prayed, a kingdom of God on earth with peace and goodwill toward all men and women.
Mrs. Lowe, there's another telegram for you. Oh, read it to me, Bella. It's from the National Council of the Girl Scouts. It says, not only are you the first Girl Scout, but you're the best of them all. Bury this with me, Bella. Bury it with me in the pocket of my uniform. How I wish I could make this journey for you, and I'd be there on the other side waiting for you with a cup of tea. Oh, Bella, you've been with me for almost 30 years. You're the dearest of all the friends who have been with me for these long years. Thank you. I've watched over you all these years as though you were my child. I wish I could do something for you now. You can. Just, just. Sing me one of those old songs you used to sing. <laughs> now the day is over, night is drying nigh. the sky. <coughs> uh, uh, just a sip of cold water, please. Oh, Bella. Oh, 